We are blessed in South Africa with very few pests and diseases of soybeans. However, if soybean cultivation increases at the present rate, we can expect more pests and diseases that will attack the crop. At present, we distinguish between nematodes, insects and various diseases that can be harmful to soybeans. Root knot nematodes are organisms which damage the root systems of crops and this can be very severe under certain circumstances. Sandy soils are more prone to nematode infection than soils high in clay, but they are by no means absent in clay soils and can still be a problem. There are cultivars available that have good resistance to root knot nematodes, but no chemical is registered for use on soybeans. Typical symptoms of nematode problems are spots in a field where the plants turn yellow when older and also stunted plants. A controlled plot of soybeans, where no chemicals were used, shows smaller and light green plants. Nematodes controlled by chemicals in the same trial as the previous plot. The soybeans are healthy and no obvious symptoms or damage is visible. The spotted maize beetle can sometimes be a problem, especially on the edges of fields. Damage is usually insignificant and therefore control is unnecessary. This photo shows damage to soybean leaves caused by the caterpillar of the painted lady butterfly. The damage looks quite dramatic, but is restricted to only a few plants and with only one or two leaves involved, which makes control unnecessary. The adult painted lady butterfly is a common butterfly in grain producing regions and is active during the warm summer months. Green stink bugs can be a problem in soybeans, especially at the pot filling stage. They usually damage the immature pots where they feed on the small seeds. The young bugs look totally different from the adults and have brilliant black colored dots on their wings. This is a pest that needs to be controlled because losses can be severe. There are many chemical products registered to control green stink bugs which also control some of the other pests found on soybeans. Several caterpillars and loopers, such as bollworms and the plusia looper, can cause damage to the leaves of soybeans. The damage looks worse than it really is and farmers must be careful not to try and control them if not necessary. Because in many cases, the predators that prey on these pests are killed and then the problem can get out of control. Bacterial blight is the most common disease of soybeans, but also the least damaging. The occurrence of the disease differs from season to season and it looks worse than it is. No control is needed for this disease because it also comes in late in the season. Frog eye leaf spot is a disease that occurred in Zimbabwe some years ago, but with very few outbreaks in South Africa. It is hardly heard of now, but can return as can any disease. Soybean rust is nowadays endemic east of the escarpment in regions such as KwaZulu-Natal, Pitretif and Dirkisdor. It is very destructive and can kill soybeans in a matter of days. Farmers use preventative spray at first flowering and control is usually very good. The disease may spread to other regions in future and therefore sentinel plantings are conducted every season throughout all the soybean producing areas. These plantings are then monitored on a weekly basis and as soon as rust is found, farmers are notified that they should spray immediately. Sclerotinia can be described as currently the most destructive disease of soybeans in South Africa. And unfortunately, there are still no chemicals to control it and no cultivars that are resistant to the disease. Sclerotinia is caused by a fungus which can survive for many years in the soil. Most of the broadleaf weeds are also hosts for the disease, as are sunflowers, where it is just as destructive. Usually plants become infected through wounds 
such as where flowers and small pots are dropped from the plant. But it can also enter through growing mycelia, originating from the germination of sclerotia below the soil surface. The disease is not coupled to any particular growth stage or time of the season, but develops under strict microclimatic conditions. It is sometimes known to be the good soybean farmer's disease, and the reason is that the disease only develops when there is a dense canopy in which the rays of the sun cannot penetrate and where the soil is moist. The disease also prefers cooler conditions, such as when it rains without stopping for a day or two. So in order for the disease to develop, the pathogen must be present in the soil, temperatures must be cool, and the host plants and soil must be moist. When the canopy closes between rows, it is sometimes not possible to establish in which direction the rows run, especially when soybeans are over one meter tall and the plants are healthy with big, dark green leaves. If all other factors are now favorable, the sclerotia will germinate to form little mushroom-like structures all over the surface of the soil below the canopy. The mushroom-like structures are called apotecia, and two such types of apotecia are found in soybeans. One is from the Cyhethus species, which is a fungus that grows on decaying organic material and is in reality a sign of good organic content of the soil, also known as bird's nest, because it looks like little eggs in a bird's nest, the spores that develop from these structures only grow on organic material. The apotecia of the sclerotinia species are more mushroom-like and are also not long-lived. As soon as the spores are ready to scatter, millions of spores enter the environment below the canopy, where they need some moisture and a wound to infect the plant with the disease. Once in the stem of the plant, they immediately start to form new sclerotia, which will find their way back into the soil where they stay dormant till the next season if conditions are favorable. All parts of the plant above the site of infection will start to die and seeds in pots will not develop further. It is possible to try and avoid or bypass Claritinia infection using ultra short season cultivars especially when they have a determinate habit of growth. In the first place, these cultivars start to flower very early when the canopy is not already closed. So, there is still enough sunlight that penetrates to the soil and the conditions for the development of the disease are not favorable. Secondly, the time during which plants can be wounded is shortened because these cultivars have flowers for a maximum of five to seven days and if the disease is not present in this time, no infection will occur. A trial conducted in the Kindros area of the Highfield shows that a moderate season cultivar was heavily infected with sclerotinia while the short season cultivar next to it had no disease at all. The difference in yield was nearly two tons per hectare.